The main enemy of cars, as we have already said, is high mileage. Otherwise, everything here is designed for a long and happy operation. Access to all systems is convenient, especially if you remove the outer body panels. The good old 2.0 F4R is well known to all Renault owners for duster and Megane slash fluence. F4R 720 and F4R 820 were installed on Traffic 2, their differences are minimal. This is a very reliable, strong, long-lasting engine without special childhood illnesses, with cheap spare parts and easy to maintain. On Traffic 2, the motor feels good with runs over 500,000 if it was properly serviced. It is worth monitoring the condition of the wiring, changing the phase regulator with each replacement of the timing belt and not overheating the piston cokes very readily. It is especially necessary to monitor the state of crankcase ventilation and the cleanliness of the fuel tank. Well, AI-92, even the derated versions of the engine on traffic, are poorly tolerated, detonation is perfectly audible. The fuel consumption of traffic with such an engine is quite moderate, and this is a very good option if you are not obsessed with fuel economy or are ready to install HBO, since the engine has hydraulic lifters and the valves burn out very rarely. Heavy fuel engines are represented by 1.9 F9Q and 2.0 M9 are light diesel engines. The second option was installed after restyling. And the top 2.5 engine with the G9U index is a representative of the commercial line and is very different in design. It was installed for the entire period of the model's release. The most common engines are 1.9 with a capacity of 101 and 82 horsepower. These are the first generation F9Q series engines with Bosch common rail fuel equipment and turbines without variable geometry. Units 1.9 are considered very reliable, but as usual, there is a nuance. To begin with, you need to carefully monitor the oil pressure since when the oil pump wears out, it lacks pressure and this causes the liners to rotate. In addition, possible problems include a dead vacuum pump, overheating and wiring failures and the engine is highly dependent on the condition of the mass airflow sensor and the timing belt breaks easily if a cheap analog is installed or if a broken drive belt for additional units gets underneath it. Well, or if you just tried to drive more than 60,000 from replacement to replacement. The extremely unsuccessful EGR heat exchanger is the icing on the cake. Here, jamming of the damper, Breakdown of the throttle for shutting off the internal heat exchanger of the unit, and heat exchanger leaks are possible. At the same time, the motor is quite reliable mechanically. Early wear of the piston is almost never encountered. The cylinder head breaks only if you drive long and hard with clamped valves, well, or with the wrong injection moment or overblowing, and with other gross operating errors. The engine is capable of throwing up quite a few minor failures, loss of power and the like, but for the most part they are solely related to maintenance. M9 or series motors are noticeably more powerful, but they have less resource. And yet, unfortunately, piezo injectors are not the most successful node, as we already talked about in the Renault Scenic review. They expect phenomenal reliability from the 2.5 G9U engines, but in reality everything is not quite like that. The piston resource is really very high, per million. The turbines are very common, KKK03, Pre-Styling, and GTB1752, with a service life of 250,000. Not a record, but quite worthy, given the low price of cartridges. Another plus is the reliable Bosch fuel equipment of the second and third generations after restyling, electromagnetic injectors, and a successful layout that greatly simplifies maintenance. Everything else is not so rosy. The injectors stop working due to water flooding from the hood, and they can also easily become stuck due to corrosion and burnout of the washers. The engine has a rather complex timing belt with a belt and gears, into the casing of which oil loves to flow through an unsuccessful oil seal. In addition, the gears in the timing drive sometimes break. The design of the pump is extremely successful antifreeze can get into the crankcase through it. And where would we be without the same problematic EGR unit as on other Renaults, only here a broken throttle has a high chance of flying under the valves. And the saddest thing is that the cylinder head is prone to cracking. 
This usually happens at very high mileage, but often the cause is overheating. The second big nuisance is a jamming of the oil pump pressure relief valve and a high probability of a drop in oil pressure. The strangest thing is that there is no original repair piston for the motor. There are no liners either. The short block changes regularly. However, non-original parts are available and not very expensive. In general, the impression of the 2.5 G9U is ambiguous. With good maintenance, the chances of a long and happy run are high, but the price of any negligence is very high. And the saddest thing is that there are no and cannot be any contract engines. They didn't install 2.5 G9U on passenger cars, so the used engine will be old, with high mileage and, as a rule, killed. There are few complaints about the brakes. In front, discs with a diameter of 305 millimeters and a thickness of as much as 28 millimeters are used. These are difficult to overheat, and they last a long time. The caliper is simple, with a floating bracket, and very reliable. However, with runs well over 200,000, they have usually been repaired more than once due to wear of the guides and seals. The rear brakes are also disc, but non-ventilated, and the diameter is smaller, 280 millimeters. The main claim is to the parking brake mechanism, it is screw here, and such a design is prone to souring, leaks, and corrosion of the handbrake drive seal area. It is worth remembering that the rear brake discs are made integral with the hub, traditionally for French cars. Another usually weak point is a mechanical vacuum pump on diesel engines, its resource is not at all infinite. Extra knocks, chips and oil, weak brakes, all this can be the result of wear. And remember, these vans have non-ABS versions. Now this is a rather serious drawback, especially for commercial vehicles with its large range of load changes on the rear axle. In terms of suspension, Renault Traffic 2 and Opel Vivaro I are real commercial vehicles, so the suspensions are made with a fair margin of reliability. The McPherson strut in the front suspension is very strong, not like cars, there are strong support bearings, powerful shock absorber rods, and the pipes themselves, good springs. The levers are massive, steel, with simple rubber silent blocks bushings and a replaceable ball joint. The levers are attached to a solid subframe with strong bolts. The rear suspension has a rigid beam with a panhard rod, very durable, with separate bearings for the springs on the body, so that the side members do not break when overloaded. Of course, the wheel bearings are replaceable everywhere and are very strong. In the front suspension, a relatively weak point is the anti-roll bar struts, and in the rear, only the silent blocks of the beam, panhard rod bushings and fasteners wear out. But there is a caveat, suspensions are demanding on the quality of service. The levers on both axles must be set strictly according to the regulations, tightening the silent blocks under load, monitor the health of the springs. And, of course, the suspension will live if you do not overload the car. With a load of two tons, the rear beam brakes and the attachment points turn out. Renault Traffic 2 and Opel Vivaro I use conventional power steering. True, the performance is very different from the passenger car in the massiveness of all elements and strength. The high pressure pump is also structurally different from the usual Bosch. There are specific French features in the form of fanciful mounting brackets for attachments and a large number of flexible hoses and hydraulics. But the main problems are related to the mileage of commercial vehicles. There are specific troubles, for example, deep wear of the rail distributor valve, mechanical wear of the shafts and broken threads of the tips, which are typical for runs well over half a million kilometers. CV joint wear for cars with high mileage is a typical thing, but there are at least problems with splines, everything is assembled and disassembled quite well. On sale there are separate tripods, outboard bearings, and even outboard brackets. So in this part of accidental breakdowns you cannot wait, it is important not to allow operation with torn anthers. Before restyling, the model was mainly equipped with mechanics of the PK5 series with a 1.9 diesel and PK6 for cars with a 2.0 petrol and a 2.5 diesel. After restyling, Renault Traffic 2 and Opel Vivaro, I received PF6 boxes for all diesel engines, and PK6 remained on petrol 2.0.
Boxes of the PK5-6 family are widely unified, have a compatible stuffing, and are interchangeable. The body of the boxes is made with a good margin of safety. The bearings are also good. It mainly fails the oil seal of the gear shift mechanism, which affects the shaft of the mechanism and the bearing. However, spare parts are available. Drive cables have a bad habit of flying off the levers, but to prevent such a breakdown, a well-known Chinese site has special sets of a plate and a washer. For long runs, you still have to climb into the box. Unfortunately, it is not very convenient to disassemble. There are many press fits, many places where the gap needs to be adjusted, and some of the bearings are irreversibly damaged during disassembly. And a set of bearings is not cheap. The PF6 box is newer, lighter, but its synchronizers last less. But there are almost no problems with the shift drive, and the bearings for it are cheap and reliable. Repairing PF6 is much easier, but used ones are for some reason much more expensive. The flywheel on all motors is simple, single mass, the clutch drive is hydraulic, reliable. Oddly enough, an automatic transmission was also offered for traffic and Vivaro. True, this is not a real automatic, but just a Magneti Mirelli shift and clutch drive, modeled on Fiat seal speed transmissions. The problems are generally the same. In winter, the mechanism refuses to work until it warms up, loves fresh fluid in the drive. At the age of 10 years and older, it is capricious and flows. Services do not like him very much, although in general he is logical and works quite tolerably, much better than Easytronic on Opel or a similar robot with electric switches on VAZ. The Italian mechanism has racing roots, shifts are carried out quickly. But there is no need for a delivery van to roar at regassing, and the mechanical part does not withstand repeated hard switching badly. As with any commercial vehicle, Renault traffic runs on average are very high, and it is difficult to count on perfect condition. But the use of high quality and galvanized metal, coupled with its large thickness, is encouraging. Privately operated cars, especially passenger ones, can be found in restyled versions in their native colors, although the chances are slim. In Russia, traffic is not the most popular model, and it will be difficult to find the perfect copy. Lacquer often peels off cars, especially in the southern regions. Most of them have over half a million miles on them. And with such runs, the chances are high that the car has already been repainted to the waist a couple of times. However, this is not so scary. The only question is the quality of the work. When viewed, it is better not to be lazy and dismiss the options with outright violations of the paintwork repair technologies. The main places where corrosion occurs are the front arches, especially at the junction with the door, the driver's sill, the area around the gas filler flap, the rear arches along the edge, the lower part of the side sliding door niche and sill, as well as the rear doors, especially if they are dented many times. In root cars, the front edge of the hood often rots and the edge of the roof suffers. The front door is rot mainly from the inside, at the junction of the metal and the inner lining in this place the seal just fits and it is often wet. The lower edge rarely suffers. The attachment points of the external molding corrode extremely slowly and rust is not selected outward. The sliding door opening often blooms in the lower part, you need to look at the joint of the panels under the seal. And it's definitely worth checking the step moisture accumulates under the rug. Often there is corrosion in the attachment points of the driver's door limiters. This is the result of loads from traveling work. A high floor and thick metal contribute to longevity, especially if the owners keep the floors dry and sometimes rust the car. The floor of the cargo compartment rusts mainly along the edges and in the recesses of the seat mounts from the passenger compartment. The problem is that the floor carpet here is filled with foam rubber and gets wet over time. First of all, the seams suffer and these are the joints of the floor with the arches of the rear wheels and the rear panel. The plastic lining of the side panel is well ventilated and therefore moisture does not reach the side seams of the vertical panels. The niche of the sill of the side door has stampings. They retain moisture, which spreads along the rubber bottom seal of the door throughout the entire surface of the door. The seal must be dried regularly, like a niche. In addition, there is always damage to the paintwork from the legs. 
the lower door rail is also a problematic element. You should check both its fastenings and the niche itself in which it is located on the body. The sill of the driver's door is a typical place for through corrosion. If you remove the carpet, on most cars you will see a large area where the paint has peeled off, and at best a gray zinc coating is visible, and there is almost certainly loose corrosion under the doorway seal and wiring harness. In the worst case, there is a hole through which the asphalt is visible. Access from the interior to the rear wheel arches can be obtained by removing the trim on the side panels of the interior. Arches rarely rot through. The main problems here are due to internal corrosion, with condensation on the side walls of the body and moisture on the floors. Let's look under the bottom. Here everything is usually not bad. The body floors suffer minimally, they are treated conscientiously from the factory, and corrosion spreads slowly. Thresholds are surprisingly thick and well galvanized. The main thing is that the peeling paint is renewed on time. It is mainly the inner edge at the very bottom and the scarves of the amplifiers that suffers. The internal mudguards and spars are made of very thick steel, and from the factory everything is covered with a bituminous compound. Although there are no lockers in the rear wheel arches, they are also heavily factory coated, so there are only a few problematic edges. The spring mounting location suffers if the rubber support has been damaged. The middle there is thick, but it frays with a spring. The front arches show some corrosion at the top and where the plugs are placed on the trailing edge. The condition of the body is not bad even for cars of the first releases, especially if you remember how sad everything is with the Mercedes-Benz Vito W638 of the same years. One of the most inconspicuous places where corrosion feels at home is the rear bumper beam. It is not visible from the outside, and it is made of black metal, so by the age of 15 it rots through. The front beam also corrodes, but not so much. Renault traffic is as simple as possible even the windows are mostly manually operated, so there are not so many breakdowns with huge mileage. Locks, door hinges are reliable, but still often require replacement for traveling cars. Broken power window cables are rare, but they do happen. Due to intensive use, wear of the drive gears is sometimes encountered. The windshield is large, expensive, and it is also very often glued badly that flows, because of which the interior and the glass frame suffer. Age takes its toll, and small technical sins are not uncommon on traffic. These are mirror vibrations, wiper trapezoid wear, sliding door mechanism failures, and loss of tightness of the hood seals, due to which water enters the engine. Diesel engines 2.5, which do not have a cover, especially suffer from moisture, glow plugs, and nozzles turn sour. From time to time, the plastic of the bumpers becomes brittle and breaks easily, especially in the southern regions. The headlights are holding up well and only require polishing. Taillights are often broken by hinged doors, but this is to be expected on commercial vehicles. The steering shaft seal in the engine compartment flies out of its place. As a result, cold air blows into the driver's feet, and it becomes noisy in the cabin. The rear window washer tube falls out of the mounts in winter and is erased on the asphalt. But given the age and tough operation, these are all trifles the quality of workmanship can be assessed as excellent. Salon at traffic is tailored firmly enough not to fall apart with runs over half a million. Of course, the quality of sound insulation is low, everything is assembled from creaky thick plastic, but the interior is long-lasting and, in general, quite comfortable for a working machine. Condition depends on mileage and attitude. Dashboards, unfortunately, are far from eternal. The backlight dies, sometimes the pointers fail, especially on copies before 2006. The community of owners has already mastered the ripening and installation of sample panels after 2006. With the climate and traffic, everything is not very good, and complaints about the non-heating stove are encountered regularly. The damper cables fail due to corrosion of the guides and axles and gear breakage. But more often the reasons are different. The rear stove of the vans is controlled by a solenoid, and it may not work. It will be cold in the cabin even if the car does not warm up to operating temperature and the stove radiator is clogged due to the rare replacement of antifreeze. 
Fortunately, the accessibility of the system elements is excellent. To remove the cables and the radiator, you do not need to disassemble the front panel, and the stove unit with the motor is dismantled from under the hood, almost like on the first generation Mercedes Benz Vito. Surprisingly, cars with live air conditioning often come across. Its main breakdowns are sensor and fan failures. The electrics are as condo as possible, and the arrangement of elements, as is often the case on commercial vehicles, is excellent. Of the frankly strange and unsuccessful decisions, one can only recall the block of the steering column loop made together with the steering column levers. He has a decent resource, but the replacement price bites. In general, everything is simple here, no multi-tires or optics. The connectors are huge, as they were on the Ziguli, the wires are thick, the fuses are large, there are a lot of bolted terminal connections. It is a pity that the quality of the wires themselves is not very high. On the machines of the first releases, crumbling insulation in the engine compartment and even in the cabin is a common thing. Nevertheless, there are a minimum of problems with the electrician taking into account the mileage, of course. Because dying MID displays that require relay replacement, ignition switch contact groups, broken connectors for blow plugs and coolant heater, interior ceiling lamps and limit switches, violation of ground attachment, this is all, alas, the everyday life of the owner. For commercial vehicles, Traffic 2 slash Vivaro I look very light and at the same time almost trouble-free in operation thanks to a successful body, reliable suspensions, and generally successful engines and gearboxes. These vans do not pretend to be heavy trucks, and this is rather a plus if you need a car not to carry a ton or more, but mainly to transport light loads.